Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I am a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. I know how stressful and overwhelming it can be when you are interviewing for a new position. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a teaching portfolio from scratch that you can use either in person during interviews or digitally for online interviews. Now I have previously made a portfolio video. This is an updated version of that video. Number one, because I cringe looking at that video. And number two, because I wanna show you how to take your portfolio and make it digital. But I do wanna be clear, I am not in the process of interviewing. I am not changing positions. I am not changing schools or districts. I'm staying where I'm at. But I wanted to make an updated video for you all because I have enhanced a lot of things and because I cringe so much when I watched the old one. Now my next video is going to be a walkthrough of my portfolio. So I'm gonna show you page by page by page so you can see exactly what I include. I'm not gonna show you necessarily all of that in this video. This one is really more on how to set up your portfolio from the beginning. So let's talk about materials that you need. Obviously, if you are creating a physical portfolio, which I do recommend having, even if right now a lot of your interviews are probably online, it is nice to have a physical portfolio. So I recommend having some type of a portfolio binder. Now this one is by Mead Cambridge and it is the one inch clear view professional binder. Yes, I had to read it off of it because that's way too much for me to remember. I got mine from Target. It was a little bit less than $10. You can also get them online. So I will link it for you down in the description box. What I really like about this binder is that clear view cover. It allows you to put a customized cover on the front my old portfolio was just solid black on the front and it just wasn't as eye-catching as this one is. So on the inside of this binder, there is a one inch ring, which I have found to be perfect for me and my portfolio. There is a pocket on either side. There is this spot for business cards and there's actually this little elastic piece where you can keep a pen. The next thing you are going to need are page protectors. Personally, I put all of my documents into page protectors because number one, I want to help protect them, page protectors. <laughs> but number two, I also think it gives your portfolio a more professional appearance. It's going to make everything feel sturdier and just cleaner, crisper. So I picked these up from Amazon. I will link them for you. This was a hundred pack. They were cheap. <laughs> now, I also really like the Avery brand, but they are going to be a little bit more expensive. Honestly, I think as long as you have some sort of page protector, you will be fine. The next material you need are dividers, but not any dividers, okay? Let's talk about this. If you are putting all of your documents into page protectors, typical dividers are not going to be wide enough. They're not going to pop out past the page protector, which does not serve the purpose of a divider. <laughs> you need to be able to clearly see the dividers in order to use them. I recommend these page protector dividers. This is the Avery brand. I haven't really found other brands, but I'm sure there are other ones out there. I got these on Amazon. I have seen them both in a five count and an eight count. This one is the eight count, but I will try to link them for you. So they are called called sheet protector dividers, exactly what I call them. I knew I had something right in this video, but these are fantastic because not only does the divider pop out on the side, but because it is also a sheet protector, you can actually put a cover for your divider on the inside. The last material you need is some type of a template in order to create your portfolio pages. Obviously, some of the documents like your teaching certificate, it's just something that you have on hand, but but you're going to want to have cover images for your dividers, cover image for your actual portfolio. You're gonna need to create other additional pages in order to beef up your portfolio. And for me personally, I think it's easiest to have a template so they all look consistent. Now I do have a portfolio template in my store. I will link it for you in the description box. I will say, not to brag or anything, but it is one of my best sellers. I've had thousands of teachers purchase it and I have had so many tell me like, this is what helped me get the job. So if you are interested in just making your life easier, instead of having to create your own, you can purchase that and it's editable so you can start using it right away. Once you have collected the materials in order to create your portfolio, the next step is to start collecting 
documents that you have on hand. Some of those documents might include your teaching certificate or letters of recommendation or lesson plans that you have. I will say if you are brand new to teaching, maybe you've only done an internship, you may not have as many of these materials as someone who's been teaching 5, 10, 20 years. But in this video, I am going to show you how to add some more substance to your portfolio so that it doesn't seem like you barely have anything. Once you have collected those physical documents that you have on hand, the next step is to start creating your portfolio template. So these are going to be all of your covers, any additional pages that you want to include, table of contents so it stays nice and organized. Now I am going to be using my portfolio template that I mentioned. So if you are using that template, this is basically like a tutorial for you on how to get started. Once you download the file and unzip it, you will see there are a few different things included. There is a Google Slides PDF, there is an editable PowerPoint template, there is the product info, which I do recommend reading through, I have to say it, and there's also a tutorial video. I also recommend watching the tutorial video, but I'm also gonna kind of show you on here. In terms of choosing between Google Slides and PowerPoint, honestly, it is personal preference. I used to be team PowerPoint for years, and now I have moved to team Google Slides. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to open up the PDF and in order to create my own copy of this template that I can use, I'm going to click where it says click here and this is going to prompt me to make a copy of that template. So I'm going to click the blue make a copy button. This is going to save it into my Google Drive so that I can edit it and I can go back and access it. I am gonna go ahead and rename it. <laughs> so instead of copy of, I'm gonna say Michelle, oops. <laughs> Michelle Ferre portfolio and I can take out template and editable. Okay. You will notice on every slide there is this yellow square or rectangle that has directions. That is really, really helpful. I do recommend reading it. But I noticed that the first slide is just a cover and this one actually has an apple. There's also a blank one or one without clip art, but I like apples. Okay, I'm a teacher. It's cliche. It's fine. I'm going to go in and edit my name. So I'm going to type Michelle Ferre. And actually, I'm going to add my E with the accent. So I'm going to go to insert special characters, type in E, and it will pop up. Which one is it? Right there. Okay, so insert that. Cool. That page is done. I can go ahead and delete these other two covers because I'm not using them. So I don't need to keep them. <laughs> Up next, I have all of the cover images for the actual divider. So this is what is going to go in the page protector for those dividers. I've included a lot of different examples. You don't have to use all of them. Plus they are editable. So for example, if I don't want it to say informational documents, maybe I want it to say important documents. I can type that in instead. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change it back because I like informational. But um, I do wanna keep informational documents. I do want to keep awards and certificates, professional development. I typically put that in other areas. I don't have its own section. So I'm going to delete that one by hitting backspace. Lesson plan examples. So I am going to include lesson plan examples, but I'm going to actually split them up by subject area just to make it a little bit more organized. So I'm going to delete that classroom management. I will use. Routines and procedures, I kind of just lump that all in with classroom management, so I'm going to delete that one. I am going to use literacy instruction, mathematics instruction, science instruction, and social studies. I do not need small group, I kind of lump that in with the other ones. Student work sample, same thing, I lump that in with my lesson plan, so I'm going to delete that. Arts integration, I lump that in with other things, I'm using the word lump a lot. <laughs> Differentiation methods lump that in. Technology, same thing. I'm going to delete. Um, data and assessments, again, I lump that in. Delete. Parent communication, that goes elsewhere. Other documents, yes. Okay, so let me go ahead and count because I have eight dividers, so I should have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Okay. I do want to move them around though, because as I'm creating my portfolio template in Google Slides, I like to keep everything literally in the order I'm going to be using it. So I like to have informational first, then awards, then I'm going to go ahead and put my lesson plan. So I'm going to move literacy, math, science, and social studies, then classroom management, then other. Perfect. I have these editable ones, but I don't need those. So I'm going to delete them. Up next, I have my table of contents and you will notice I have 
one with eight slots, seven slots, six slots, five, four, and so on. It really just depends on how many items I have to add into that section but I don't really know until I start kind of brain dumping what I have. So what I'm gonna do is a little hack for you. I'm gonna go to each cover. So for example, informational documents and down in the speaker notes, I'm going to start writing a list of what I'm going to include. So first of all, I know I'm gonna include my cover letter. I'm going to include my resume. I'm gonna include my teaching certificate, my graduate transcript, my undergraduate transcript, philosophy of education, formal evaluations, and letters of recommendation. Okay, so for informational documents, I do have eight different things. So what I'm gonna do is come down and I'm gonna select the one that has eight. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm gonna come up and I'm going to put it underneath of informational documents. Cause again, I wanna keep it in the order I'm going to be using it. And I can go ahead and transfer that text into each one of these boxes. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna actually do that for all of my different covers and then I'll check back in with you. Now, one little trick I do wanna show you, I'm on my other documents section and I have more than eight items. I actually have 10 items that I want to include. So I've already filled in the first eight. What I'm gonna do, since I need two more, I'm gonna come down to the table of contents that only has two. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it underneath. You can actually edit the numbers. So instead of having it say one and two, I'm gonna have it say nine and 10 and then I can type those other two items. So SLO example and school community. All right, now that I have finished all of those table of contents, I'm gonna go ahead and delete those kind of templates that were in there because I no longer need them. Now the rest of these pages are meant for adding in those supplementary pages that I mentioned. So beefing up your portfolio with images and text and examples and all of that good stuff. I will say as much as possible, I do like to include pictures. I think a picture is worth a thousand words, but I am gonna show you what to do if you don't have a lot of pictures to use as examples. Now, as you decide what supplementary pages to add in, I find it helpful to go back to your table of contents. So I'm under my first table of contents for informational documents. I notice my cover letter, that's gonna be something separate. I'm not gonna create that within this template. I actually have a cover letter and a resume template if you all are interested in that. But for now, I'm just going to kind of skip over that because that's something I can just print and add into my portfolio. Same thing for my teaching certificate, same thing for my graduate and under graduate transcript, but my philosophy of education, that's just something extra that I want to add in. So I can use one of those templates in order to create that. So I'm gonna come down and I wanna use this text one that has four different sections. So again, I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to come up and I'm gonna paste it after my table of contents. So I'm going to paste and this is where I would create philosophy of education. And this is a longer title, so I'm gonna highlight the text, make it a little bit smaller so it fits. Perfect, okay. Now I can go in and start adding that text. But like I said, my next video will be a walkthrough of my portfolio, so you will get to see exactly how I word things in that video. Going back to my table of contents, formal evaluations, those are just papers I've collected from my evaluations, <laughs> and letters of recommendation, those are something separate. So now I'm gonna come down to awards and certificates. Again, these are all things that I already have paper copies of. I don't need to create anything supplemental. All of these instruction sections, this is where I'm putting lesson plans. Those are all separate. I do not have any actual lesson plan templates in this portfolio template, but I do have a separate product of lesson plan templates. If you are interested in that, I will link it for you down below. So I'm gonna skip over. I'm gonna to come to classroom management. Here's where I'm adding a lot of those supplemental materials. So I said some of the things I wanna include, information on how I build relationships, how I establish classroom community, how I establish routines, how I go about family communication, student engagement, setup, instruction materials, all of that. Those are all going to be additional 
things that I include into my portfolio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to these other templates and I really wanna include some pictures for this. So I'm gonna come down to these picture slides. I have this one where it's one image and then text and then where it's on the bottom one image and I have it in all the different corners or two images. I really, and this is personal preference, I like the two images with two bodies of text. That just works for me. Now I do like to kind of alternate in my portfolio. So the first one might, might be like this and then the next one's like this and then it goes back and forth and that way it's just kind of always changing the layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy both of these and I'm gonna come up to where classroom management was and I'm going to put it underneath. Okay, so this is where I would start putting those titles. So this one is going to be building relationships. Again, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I think I did 46 last time. So just, just to keep it consistent, put that there. And I can put the title for this one, classroom community, and I want 46. This is where I'm gonna start adding in images. Now, I just kind of pulled some random images, so it's not necessarily gonna fit this title, but just to show you the process. I actually have it super easy for you to add in images. I'm gonna click on this white square and you will notice replace image pops up. I'm going to select that and I'm gonna choose upload from computer, but you can also upload from your drive or your photos. And I'm gonna come to my downloads and I'm gonna choose a picture that I have. I'm just gonna use my Mac Bakery. I would actually put that under transformations, but you get the point. I'm gonna click open and it's going to pop it right into that square. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> it makes it super easy. Then I can actually add in my caption. So for this one, I'm just gonna say math bakery. And then I can add my text over on the side. Again, I'm gonna show you everything that I include in my portfolio in my next video. These are just some examples for you. But I understand if you are new to teaching, you may not have a lot of images. You can go on and find example images of what you want to create in your own classroom, but make sure that you credit whoever it was that originally took that image. I recommend you could credit them right down in that you know, little caption box that I have underneath. You could do it on the text to the side. You wanna make it clear to your employer or whoever you're interviewing with that it's not actually your photo, you're just using it as an example. But it does show that you're proactive and you're already thinking about what you want to include in your own classroom when that time comes. So you're gonna repeat that process to create as many of those additional pages as you need. Once you are done creating those additional pages, go through and delete those templates. So I did not use any of these. I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. Keep in mind, you can always make a new copy of this Google slide. So if you delete it and then you're like, wait, I totally needed that template, you can just create a new copy and copy it over. So the last thing I'm going to do is create the labels for my dividers. So this is on the very last slide. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so that you all can see it. I do already have the pre-made titles that I included on these black dividers, but if you wanna create your own, or maybe you wanna make them colored like rainbow, I do have this one down below. So if you wanna add fill into that cell, you can come up here to the fill color, you can make it whatever color you want, you can edit the text to say whatever you want it to say, but I ended up using all of those pre-made titles, so I don't really have to change anything. However, I will say that these were sized to fit the five divider and the eight dividers are a little bit smaller a little bit more narrow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually try to kind of resize this so I'm gonna just drag this over I want them all to stay on two lines I don't want any of them to go to three lines but I'm just gonna make it skinnier to make sure that it fits a little bit thinner really just kind of playing with it okay <laughs> Okay, maybe a little bit more. Oh, now I'm on to three, but I'm not using parent communication. So actually I'm gonna just delete that whole row. Oh, I needed other documents. Okay, I'm gonna just change this one to say other <laughs> documents. Okay, I can still go a little bit more narrow, a little bit more narrow. Okay, we're, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. That looks pretty good. <laughs> so even though I'm not using all of those tabs, I'm just gonna leave it because when I print, it's not really gonna matter. I'm gonna delete this because I don't need it. 
and that should be good. Now that you have created all of those template pages for your portfolio, the next step is to print them. I do recommend printing on cardstock. I already mentioned that using page protectors makes your portfolio seem more professional and sturdy. Cardstock does the same thing. It's going to make your pages thicker, and as you're turning them, you're just like, that's some nice paper, rather than having it be super flimsy, and it's gonna help it hold up over time. But I will say, the only page I do end up printing on regular paper instead of cardstock are those divider tabs. And here's why. I know you can actually insert the divider tabs into the little sections, but personally, I feel like that's a pain and it never ends up staying in there and they end up flying out and I don't like it. So I'm gonna show you an alternative. I actually end up just taping them on and I don't need it to be super thick. So I just print that page on regular paper. Okay, I have printed all of my pages and I made sure when I printed them that I left them in the exact order that I wanted them to be in because it's going to make the portfolio assembly much easier. I have my materials, I have my printed pages. I'm just gonna start putting it together. So first let's start with the binder. I have this cover, which I can go ahead and take out the cardboard kind of piece that comes in it. I do not need that, but I'm going to replace that with my actual portfolio cover. So I'm just going to slip that in. Okay, perfect. Now I'm ready to start adding the pages on the inside. Now I do need to take this little cardboard piece out and I'm gonna put this kind of to the side for now. I have my tabs. So informational documents is one of the titles for my tabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. All right. Now, I don't wanna get these mixed up with my actual page protector, so I'm gonna move those to the side as well. But let's go ahead and insert this first one. So informational documents, I'm just going to slip it into the page protector. And I will need to put that divider tab on. So again, I printed my divider tabs just on regular paper. But when I cut them out, I wanna make sure it's going to fit on the tab. And if you look, the tab is gonna be eh, maybe just a little bit too wide, so I might have to trim it down just a little bit. But I actually like to use scissors. Typically, I use a paper cutter for everything, but with this, because it's so precise, I just grab a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. Okay, so I've cut out the little one that says informational documents, and I'm gonna take it and just kind of set it on there. It looks like it's a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna trim just kind of along the top, very, very minimal, but just to get rid of some of the extra space. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. I have some extra black space, I'm just going to trim that. And then it should fit pretty well. Yes, that is perfect. So I am taking just like regular scotch, packaging tape. Let me go ahead and trim this so it is about the right size. <laughs> and this is definitely not something that's perfect. I just kind of make it work. I'm going to trim off the ends. So that's a piece of tape that's about the right size. Now what I like to do is actually go ahead and stick it first onto the tape and then take the tape and stick it onto the tab. So I'm going to make sure that it's straight. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just wrapping it around and pushing down. And there we go, there's my divider. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and add this into my portfolio. So I'm gonna pop this open and I'm gonna put it on the left-hand side and I'm just gonna move it out of the way. Now I have my table of contents, which I always like to put next. So I'm gonna take a regular, oh no, I dropped that one. Okay, I'm gonna take this one, <laughs> regular sheet protector and I'm just going to slip this on the inside. All right, and add it into my portfolio. And I'm literally going to repeat that exact same process. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish assembling this and then I will catch back up with you. So now I have finished 
finished creating my physical portfolio and I don't know about you all, but I just think it's beautiful and I just wanna carry it around with me everywhere. But especially with everything going on right now, I do think it's smart to also have a digital portfolio that you can send through an email or present during a video conference. So I'm gonna show you how to take this exact same portfolio template and make it digital. So I have my Google Slides. One of the first things that I want to do is delete those yellow direction boxes because that would be kind of embarrassing to have on your portfolio. I'm gonna go ahead and just select this and hit backspace in order to delete it. I also want to go ahead and delete anything I had in the speaker notes. So I mentioned when you had your cover to make a list of all the things you wanted to include, I no longer need that. So I am going to select all of it, hit delete, and make sure that that area is clear. Again, I'm gonna delete the direction box. I would want to do that on every slide. Now, obviously some of the documents I created within this template and they're there and they're good to go. But some of them, for example, my cover letter and my resume, I actually created that from a PowerPoint template. So I'm gonna show you how to take that and put it into Google Slides. So I just opened up my resume and cover letter within PowerPoint. I'm going to actually save each slide as a JPEG image. So I'm going to go to File, export and I can keep it under downloads. That's fine. Under file format, I want to choose JPEG. This is going to save it as an image. I actually want to do every slide and down here under width and height. And maybe this depends on your like form of PowerPoint, whether it's an old version or a new version. I don't know, but on mine, this pops up. I'm going to take whichever is the bigger number. So in this case, the height, because it's portrait mode, I'm going to make it 2,900. Don't ask me why, but I've done years of like playing around with this and it gives me the cleanest and crispest, crispest, I think that's a word, image. <laughs> so I'm gonna click export and this is going to save each slide as a JPEG image. So I can click okay, I can now exit out of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually add a blank slide. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to choose blank and I'm going to insert that image as the background. So I'm gonna click background, choose image, and I want to upload. So in my downloads, here is that folder I just created. I want to add my cover letter first. Open, it's going to upload, and then I click done, and bam, there's my cover letter. I'm gonna repeat that one more time for my resume. So I'm gonna add a blank slide, background, choose image, find that image that I just saved from PowerPoint right here, and click open, and then click done there is my resume added in. <laughs> so what I recommend doing is going through your table of contents and making sure you have every piece. So I have my cover letter, I have my resume. Teaching certificate, okay, here's the deal. My teaching certificate is like a physical piece of paper. So I'm gonna show you how to add that in. I'm gonna go ahead and move my computer out of the way and I'm gonna come into my physical portfolio and I'm gonna go to my teaching certificate. This is actually my old teaching certificate. My most current up-to-date one is in my classroom, which I cannot get to right now. So I'm going to remove this from the page protector and I'm gonna go ahead and move my Ugh, portfolio out of the way and I'm gonna put it right here. I showed this in a previous video, but I'm gonna show it again. If you have, I think it's an iPhone 10 or more current, you can actually scan documents right on your phone. So in my phone, I'm going to the notes app and I'm going to create a new note. And under the camera icon, I'm going to choose scan documents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold it up and actually I have to hold it pretty far up in order to get the whole thing and it should select it. Okay, Whew. all right, it got it. <laughs> and I just need that one document for now, so I'm gonna click Save. It now has it as a PDF document. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that PDF and I want to share this. I'm actually going to add it into Google Drive. If I wanted to, I really could just airdrop it to my computer, but just to show you, I'm gonna select Drive, select my account, click Upload. And I love that it already pulled the name directly from the document, that's awesome. Okay, so this is uploading and then I'm gonna jump over to my computer and show you how to insert it in. So on my computer, I'm gonna come into my drive and there's that PDF. I'm gonna open it up, just check and make sure. Okay, it's not the best because technically it's like kind of sideways. Okay, hold on. 
Okay, so I see what happened. I want this to be a landscape PDF. Um, what I'm gonna do is on my phone, I have the PDF. I'm just gonna turn it to the side and then I'm going to re-export it into Google Drive and hopefully it should make it take up the full screen. Okay, now it's in my drive and now it's taking up like the full page, which is what I wanted. So I'm going to download this so it saves it to my computer. Here's the issue. I now have a PDF and I need to insert it into my slides. How do I do that? Well, <laughs> there is a website, it's called Small PDF, that will actually allow you to take a PDF and turn it into an image, a JPEG. So I'm going to add a new tab. I'm gonna go to Small PDF. Dot com and I'll put the exact link in the description but it's slash PDF dash two slash JPEG GPG JPG <laughs> but I will link it for you in the description so I'm going to choose the file and I'm gonna go to my downloads there it is click open this is going to upload and then I'm going to be able to convert it into a JPEG it's giving me an option I want to just convert entire pages which is free which is Great. So I'm going to click choose option. It is now processing and I can download. It's giving me a zip file because if I had multiple pages, it would create multiple images. But if I go in and extract from that zip file, I will see there is really just that one JPEG image. So I'm going to come back to my portfolio and this goes after my resume. So I'm going to insert a blank slide. Then I'm going to click on background, choose image, browse, I'm going to select, oh, nope, that's the PDF, that's the image. Click open, and it's going to insert it as the background. Here's the only issue with this, and I think it's a minor issue. This teaching certificate is landscape, the rest of my pages are portrait. In Google Slides, you cannot mix and match. The slides all have to be the same size and the same orientation, but personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And especially for something like this, people can clearly see, oh, it's a teaching certificate, great, it's valid, cool beans. <laughs> so I don't think it's that big of a deal, but hopefully this gives you ideas. If you have physical documents, scan them on your phone, turn it into a PDF, take that PDF, turn it into a JPEG, insert it into your portfolio, or if you have other just PDF documents on your computer, you can just take those, turn them into images, and insert them into your portfolio. Now, one thing you can do just to, you know, fancy up your portfolio a little bit is you can actually add in hyperlinks. So I'm going to come to the table of contents, and I want to make this cover letter box actually link directly to my cover letter. So I'm going to select that text box, right click, and I'm going to come down to link. I'm gonna choose slides in this presentation and I see my cover letter is on slide four. So I'm going to click slide four, click apply. So now, and this works well in present mode, but if you just click on it in regular mode and you click on that text box, it will pop up with slide four. But I can do that for each one of these. So I can take this one, right click, link. This one needs to go to slide five, apply and so on and so forth. Now, I would recommend if you're doing a digital portfolio like this, you might wanna add an instruction slide at the very beginning that says, hey, either view this in present mode and you can click in hyperlink, you know, it's up to you. But if you are just going to present your screen during some type of a video interview, you would know how to operate it and that's going to work out perfectly. In terms of sharing this with people that you wanna share it with, like the principal or whoever you're interviewing with, you are going to want to come up to the share button and it's gonna give you some options. You want to come down to change to anyone with the link, but you wanna make sure you keep it as viewer. You do not want to give them edit access because then they can change anything in your portfolio. So keep it as viewer. You are going to copy the link and then you can send that link out to whoever you are interviewing with. You could even add it into your resume so that when you send them your resume through email, it says, hey, check out my portfolio. They can click on the link and it will open it up. But just to kind of show you how this would work, if I go into present mode, let me go back to the beginning. So here's my portfolio cover. I have informational documents. Oh, I wanna see the cover letter. Click, it takes me to the cover letter. What I love about this is the fact that you're not creating a brand new portfolio. You're taking the physical portfolio you already created through the template and you're just digitizing it. That way you can send it to anyone who you want to view it. Instead of sending someone the link, you could also download this as a PDF and directly send them the PDF. So in order to do that, just come to file, download, PDF document, 
it's going to save it to your computer. And then you could email this PDF out and they could easily open it up and just view all of the pages of your portfolio in order. So those are two different options for you. What I love is you are not recreating the wheel here. You are taking what you already made as a physical portfolio and you're just digitizing it. You added in those extra pages that you added into your physical portfolio and you're either sending someone a link to view it on Google Slides or you're sending them a PDF document. That is it for this video. Remember, if you are interested in my portfolio template, it will be linked for you down in the description box. If you've been following me a long time, you know that I have updated this template. It is new and improved and personally, I really, really like the new additions that I added into it. Also, don't forget my next video is going to be a walkthrough of my portfolio. So I'm gonna show you page by page, everything I include, but hopefully this video at least gives you some ideas to get started. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps it be able to reach more teachers. Share it out to your teacher friends, especially anyone who you know is going to be interviewing for a job soon or in the next year or so. I would also love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I'll catch you in the next one.